Okay, great. Welcome, Stig. I'm really happy that you were uh, coming here to uh, see us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, you had an amazing career as a professional footballer. Yeah, it depends how you measure it, uh, I suppose uh, so. Um, I gave it my best over um, quite a few years. Tried to stretch um, my limits, tried to stretch my ambitions and tried to focus on on developing uh, as, a, as an individual and a team player. So yeah, it lasted a few years. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, and, and very impressive. So you were uh, almost what 11, 12 years in Liverpool, and then you played a couple of uh, couple of years in uh, Blackburn. Yeah, I was uh, eight seasons at Liverpool and three at Blackburn, and I s- lived in Liverpool uh, all the way through. Um, so I commuted uh, the last three years, but. Um, it's a uh, part of me now that city because uh, we we um, we had three kids there and we we started our family and it's a uh, it's an important time for us. Yeah, it's uh, yeah quite quite uh, quite interesting, and 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 uh, you as a young man you became quite talented in soccer soccer young and and then you went into professional football pretty young. Uh, was it a big step for you going from little Norway to suddenly in the in the best league in the in the world, at least at that, that time. Yeah, the the, the it's a massive step um, uh, moving from Norway to the English football because it's basically the, the dimensions and within basically everything around surroundings and uh, ambitions, expectations, pressure, media, um, fans. So so the dimensions are completely different uh, although the game is the same I suppose but uh, the I think the mental pressure is uh, is harder mm. as long as the expectations are lifting and and um, and uh, so, so the pre- the pressure is mounting the the bigger the league is and the bigger the club is um, yeah. but it, it was uh, interesting I um, um, I was at the age of 15. Not sure if I was going to become a footballer or a ski jumper or whatever I was going to become. But then all of a sudden when I was 16 things started to, to happen really quickly in terms of development and I, I managed to develop my own way of thinking. Mm-hmm. I, I measured myself towards myself yeah. and I wasn't too concerned about the environment and all the people and what they basically expected of me. I started to build up uh, massive expectations to myself and my own development and the way I was going to do it so and this is uh, when you're 15 16 you, you're not so structured in the way you're thinking I think it's just fell to me in a natural way yeah. so, yeah, so at, I, the, at this early age yeah, you, yeah, you, had six, a, you had an expectation to yourself that, that you you wanted to become uh, great yeah I, I, w- I went from 14 15 completely without any ambitions in life mm-hmm. to 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 I was. I think I was getting tired of that. Yeah. I think I was kind of um, being a little bit scared that I was going to become nothing. Yeah. So I, I started to produce within myself a strategy mm-hmm. on how I could um, experience the, the feeling of developing and the feeling of getting better at things. Yeah. And luckily, I was I was in football at the time, and I I, I, I got quickly results. Through, through that way of thinking. Yeah. As a, for example, if I decided that next week I'm going to focus on such and such, and then I had to go out and do that. Mm-hmm. I couldn't wake up the next morning and say, well, I give it I, I give it a miss. So you had a, at some point you had a, you had a, you were able to develop a strong mindset, expectations towards yourself, which you also managed to, uh, uh, how can I say it, implement in practice. Yeah. One thing is to say, I wanna train extra tomorrow, but Doing it is, is another thing, but yeah. but, but at, a, at, a, at a young age you were able to do that. Yeah, I think so, yeah. definitely. Uh, and um, with um, my father was uh, was a former ski jumper at top mm. international level. Popular sport, you know. Yeah, <laughs> very, yeah, and and uh, so he had he was clever in the way he approached me because mm-hmm. he he, uh, he observed me, he um, supported me, he uh, followed my activities without putting any pressure whatsoever. Mm-hmm. 
he asked good questions. He he showed me an interest. Mm -hmm. He gave me some positive feedback when he felt uh, felt that that was appropriate. But I never felt any pressure. Yeah. Only so on, only support. Self guided self guided support yeah. from 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 your father. Yeah. The the the, in, the most interesting for me looking back at this is mm -hmm. how aimless I was as a fifteen year old yeah. and how ambitious I was as a sixteen year old. So yeah. things. So something something clicked mm. around that time, yeah. and I think it's a vulnerable time for everyone. Mm. It's it's youth. It's uh, it's you're vulnerable towards uh, everything that happens with your body, with your mind, with your with your friends, and 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 everything that's yeah. basically going through a big change. Mm. So so, um, but um, and was it anything? If, if of course, it's hard to to think back. Uh, and try to remember, but but w often when people take a different course in life, there, there's some incidents which stands out, or something happening that bad grade card, yeah. mother yelling at you, you only got C, and then you something happens, and then 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 uh, people change. What was there something you, if you think back, which changed or happened, then yeah. it's had an impact, and you said, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. I think there are incidents. I think there are experiences that I had mm -hmm. um, uh, either socially, mm -hmm. where I maybe f I, I think I was a late bloomer in terms of I'm I'm born late in the year, yeah. So I'm late. I was later developed physically, mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 as well mentally possibly mm -hmm. in a social manner than than most of my friends. Yeah. So I was kind of catching up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that in itself was a, was a bit of a um, not a very nice experience where you felt you felt maybe that you fell a little bit out of the group mm -hmm. because they were way ahead of me. Yeah. So so that's an incident if you like, mm -hmm. and also it um, it affected my position in the in the football team where I was sitting a lot on the bench and the okay. coach wouldn't let me play and so on and so on when I was fourteen fifteen. Yeah. So I wanted to basically. Not not revenge the coach or any anybody else. I wanted to revenge myself yeah. because this is not good enough. Come on, yeah. P pull yourself together. Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, get some harder work in to mm -hmm. to feel that you can progress and catch up. So, so, so I think I think uh, there are certainly a few incidents. Few incidents, yeah. So so uh, at at some point, as you described, uh, some failures which you experience, which you which you try to change to the positive. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely, yeah. and I and I, I I I don't dare to think about because I I did develop a brutal approach to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, I was there was no compromise in in what I wanted to do, yeah. and when I made a decision to do it, I just had to go out and do it. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of happy now that mm -hmm. I I I um, took took this um, approach into a, into a positive direction. Yeah. You were able to able to uh, use this uh, use this mindset to, to something uh, yeah, to something but, very good. Yeah. But if I was mixed up in a in a bad environment or or, or going a, a completely different direction in a negative way, the the brut uh, the, the the brutal approach could have just could have possibly been as just as brutal in 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 the in the, in, in, the, in the other direction, yeah. and it could have gone completely wrong. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. So if you if you Decided yourself to start doing drugs or something negative. You would have done that. Who maybe, knows? Maybe maybe uh, all in. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I think. Um, okay. I think basically personality is uh, is part of it, and uh, I, I've always been driven by putting pressure on myself. Yeah. So for for me for me as a as a psychologist, clinical psychology, working with working with mental health uh, for many years, and and as we know, there's been a lot of stigma to. Uh, stigma and taboo about mental health mm. and, and this is the largest uh, health problem we have in the western world and there's still a lot of stigma and taboo uh, and I was very happy when, when you told your story about, about that you had some challenges uh, you begin having some challenges with life quality and, and your mental health uh, at, at possibly the, the, and, uh, at the peak of your career in mm. Liverpool can you, can you take us a little bit through that journey, uh, explain to us what what happened to you, how, how things started to to develop uh, during that time. I told my story. I told. I don't think my story is very different from a normal story. I think people 
you go through life will uh, uh, for, for spells shorter or longer go through periods that you f think are difficult and even even look back at, at um, things that you've been through and, and basically be depressed about some of it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I did. I think I was summarizing my, my, my career in a way. Um, uh, there was things with, with the exposure and the, the, um, the way that my environment, uh, friends, um, people in general looked upon me mm -hmm. in a completely different manner overnight from going from Norwegian football into yeah. into Liverpool I experienced that things changed uh, people changed in in their approach towards me so your network your friends maybe family some of them yeah. they, they changed uh, they changed uh, in their attitude yeah. media to me, media yeah. changed yeah. I, I was uncomfortable with that I didn't like it I didn't yeah. I didn't like the false mm. the falseness yeah. that that uh, came along with with the, that type of position that I had mm -hmm. because I had all of a sudden I had a position all of a sudden I had a face all of a yeah. sudden I had a name and I just didn't like it mm -hmm. I, I, I still enjoyed what I was doing yeah. playing football my tasks on the pitch the challenges from the coach mm -hmm. the the pressure I put on myself yeah. I still enjoyed all that playing in front of the fans yeah. and so on but uh, there, there were there were there were things around such a mm. such a position that I, that I had that I never could get used to, yeah. and I was ending up kind of starting to right. uh, build up some self-loathing and mm. and and the the, um, the paradox with it is that um, when I was at the peak of my career, where I performed the best and had the strongest position and and signed those big contracts and and got all that media attention, that was that was similar to the time that I didn't particularly like myself at yeah. all. So for, I, for, for many people listening to that, uh, it, it, is, it, is very, it is very strange for people to probably visualize it or, or think about that this happening. Can you, and can you, can you try to, uh, can you, can you try to take us through examples, uh, for example, like the thoughts you were having about yourself when, when it was tough, uh, like were you anxious, did you, uh, did you enjoy your day less? Can you can you if you can you uh, look, give us some examples on how it was for you? I think a, I think a general example is um, that uh, people look at my situation at the time mm -hmm. where I probably earned big money. I had a strong position in the team. I yeah. was playing in front of fifty thousand fans mm. um, twice a week. Mm. Um, uh, and people recognize that as something beautiful, something um, of a dream. Mm -hmm. The fact was that it cost me so much uh, of focus, of energy, of hard work to be able to pull through that, those games. Yeah. Because uh, the, I felt that the, the um, challenge I was put, um, put in to, to um, perform in those games was so demanding mm -hmm. that I had to put to use all my energy, all my focus. I even thought that this is a bit scary because I played together with players who are on a basically on a higher level than me. So I was I wasn't probably recognizing that I was at, at uh, such a level myself. So 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 I I had to put in so much hard work to prepare for the games, to get through the games, yeah. and then to evaluate the games after you know mm -hmm. so when we won a game I, I was lucky for about I was I felt happy for about two hours mm -hmm. and then I switched focus again because the next week was going to be just as hard yeah. demand just as much of me um, so it's it's a draining yeah. process so but but, but mm -hmm. although I liked it mm -hmm. this is why I like to put pressure on myself I, mm -hmm. I did like to put myself in an uncomfortable um, um, situations mm -hmm. and I've been looking for those kind of challenges ever since yeah. so I don't know if it's maybe I mean sometimes you think is this a way of punishing yourself for something mm -hmm. I don't know it's yeah. it's it's strange but mm -hmm. it's um, it's it's enjoyable when you when you feel that you can deal with it you can develop and you can handle tougher and tougher situations mm -hmm. so it's a kind of a drive and, I, and I, it's difficult to uh, to explain so, so it's a powerful engine, and, and your focus at that time, as you as you say, 
goes on on practice, uh, preparing for the games. Uh, but then you talk about the external. It almost sounds like 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 you had no space for tackling the external uh, 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 external from uh, press or or mm. media and and network that they behave differently to you. Mm. Uh, do you think that that pressure or that change uh, tipped you over? Like uh, did you did you start to be more negative towards yourself? Did you experience less happiness at some some points? Yeah, uh, there, 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 there were things I didn't appreciate that I definitely should have appreciated in a in a in a better way. Mm-hmm. Um, pr- probably your emotional um, uh, your emotional uh, register mm-hmm. is a little bit flat when you go through the difficult times mentally. I think that's well known. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I've been through periods like that, but I never tipped over. I never, I never, I never smashed into a wall. I never stopped. I never gave up anything. I took, uh, I took an interest mm-hmm. in the fact that people around me, my wife, my mother, mm-hmm. said to me, "Listen, you you don't look happy. Maybe you should go and see somebody. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe we should." Look a little bit into your situation at the, at the moment. Are you, are you happy that they, they did that at that time? Then, and what did they yeah, what yeah. did they see difference? Like they like they knew uh, Stig from early age that they saw some changes in you. So, like if we would ask them now, how did how did Stig change? What did they see? Did you think, start to laugh less or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think they saw that I I, I didn't look happy. I I was maybe a little bit flat. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they saw because they don't they they um, I so I'm certainly not a flat person. I'm no. full of I'm full of full of feelings. Yeah. Although I'm a man, it's it's a it's a <laughs> it's a stigma amongst men to yeah. talk about emotions and feelings. I never yeah. understood that. No. It's it's a, it's a very part a very important part of. Uh, of um, existing, mm-hmm. um, and I think, and I think, um, uh, I think I, I um, realized that they they had a point. Mm-hmm. Um, that you were not as happy, maybe as before, uh, as you as you as you should be. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and and I, I wasn't I wasn't able to appreciate what I've done mm-hmm. in my career. Yeah. It was finished at the time. Yeah. I stopped playing, mm-hmm. came out of the game, um, and I wasn't. And maybe still yeah. have a slight problem to to recognize that the, the fact that I had a great career. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just um, yeah, I saw when I said you had an amazing career, you you, you <laughs> were a little bit like oh, amazing with uh, uh, with uh, it's amazing for me, but not maybe maybe uh, for you. No, I think I think it's a it's a it's a shame yeah. if if that goes too far. Mm. I do appreciate what I've been through. I do I do treasure the, the the years that I had in England and everything we went through in, a, in a, was amazing in many many ways yeah. I'm not talking about a general summarizing my life I, yeah. I'm talking about parts of that of that um, experience yeah. that there was a few things with going through what I did which I was uncomfortable with and, and that there is there are a certain falseness to to the to the hype and to the exposure and to the yeah. To the status that somebody uh, all of a sudden is giving you, mm. it, it's not real. Yeah. It's false. And and one of the another example is that I did I did follow the story that was told about me in the media mm-hmm. throughout these years. Yeah. Uh, it didn't fit with my experience. Mm-hmm. So the story that's being told in the media are, are either heaven or hell. Yeah. It's. In most situations, it's it's somewhere in between. Yeah, understand. So, uh, so you talked sometimes about that, both like the falseness and then also self-loathing. So, like or negative thoughts about your about yourself. Can you can you uh, explain that to us a little bit? Like like uh, like uh, that you develop negative thoughts about yourself. Um, I think it, I think it's to do with the falseness because the the more the. I think I maybe overreacted as well. Maybe people around me weren't so bad mm-hmm. and weren't misunderstanding uh, my situation so much. Yeah. But but I had 
I have the impression that that um, they started to look up in, on me in a different way than they used to do. Yeah. Be- you because were like here because, be- you, because America, I you were a better person. What changed. was it that, yeah, was it that, that you felt that they they thought that you Steve were, were a better person and better than you were before? Maybe maybe uh, yes, maybe I overreacted that fact as well, but I had the impression that I haven't changed. Mm-hmm. But my status has changed. Yeah. I haven't. I'm the same. I want to keep you as a friend in the same way. I want to keep my brother and sister in the same way. Yeah. I want to keep basically uh, the people close to me that that um, makes me comfortable. Yeah. I want to keep that in the same way. I don't want that to change. Mm-hmm. But everything changes um, because um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's it's a kind of r- Romanticization mm-hmm. of uh, of uh, such an environment and and, and that part of uh, of being a exposed a professional footballer I ne- I never seem to ne- never seem to get used to it yeah. um, and then I probably started to analyze the way I reacted to mm-hmm. to to all these approach approaches mm-hmm. and then I, I I just felt that I couldn't do it properly. So, 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 so then that was the time when you, you started to feel like you were an idiot. Yeah. Sometimes when, when people ex- give these explanations that sometimes uh, people who are, are, are uh, given this uh, status uh, from others, they, they sometimes cut themselves in, in acting like they had that status or they, or, or they were a little bit better than yeah. they thought and then suddenly they realize, oh, now I'm behaving a little bit as I was better. Did you sometimes then also in that period cut yourself up and and maybe you were behaving like you were a little bit better that that the, and then you suddenly realized it and then then you thought to yourself, wow, why 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 did I say or do that? I'm no better than yeah. anyone else. Was there any incident like that? Maybe, but I don't I don't think that was my problem. The, no. My way of dealing with it was. Mm, get away from things, hide, mm-hmm. social, I was anxious of uh, being exposed, so I yeah. tried to stay away from exposure mm-hmm. as much as I could, and, and I, I think I'll continue to do that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm not too happy with, with. Um, I can, it's easier for me to, to, to um, recognize that people come up to me now I'm 50. Mm-hmm. It's easier for me to recognize and yeah. to appreciate that people come up to me and say, Mm. I followed your career and I was impressed or um, thank you for that um, match you played then mm-hmm. thank you for uh, it's e- it's a lot easier for me now because I I, 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 I managed to deal with it mm-hmm. I, I know it's not it's not um, not nothing of this is uh, is bothering me anymore yeah. I have a normal um, uh, looking back on things now, mm. I have a normal relationship to to most of it, and I mm. and I do appreciate the fact that I did stop mm. and think, I did stop and consider, I did stop and and um, uh, trying to analyze how can I deal with where I am at the moment, how can mm. I go on with things, how can I continue to develop. Mm. Although it's a costly process, I'm still happy that I'm not that I wasn't the type of guy who didn't give a shit no. just to basically yeah. went on without stopping off and thinking I, I do appreciate that uh, and, and you mentioned it earlier at some point you, you thought like maybe I should get professional help maybe I should get someone to to guide me a little bit how, how, how can I sort out my thoughts here and, and, and how was that experience for you when you when you decided to have professional help get some uh, get some um, Guidance on, on what you were going through. It was uh, it was um, uh, great experience mm-hmm. because I, I didn't fear it. I took an interest mm-hmm. in it. Um, the guy I was seeing was beca- beca- quickly becoming a friend because he took an interest into my case as well mm-hmm. because it was different. Yeah. It wasn't I wasn't suicidal or anything yeah. like this. Mm-hmm. I was I was. I was unhappy with a few things that I needed to to kind of look into and see how I could deal with it, and yeah. 
And um, I, I looked upon it as a learning process, as I would do if I went to one of my mentors. I always kept one or two mentors that I spoke to um, um, uh, about basically football or the challenges or the next game or uh, or something like that. I always had uh, next to my father one or two more experienced, older, mm-hmm. um, uh, who's lived longer than me, who could um, look upon my situation from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So I always invested in that. Yeah. And so I, you I, had I, I, the mindset to getting professional help at some point, to seeing if that was value, if it if it could help you. So yeah, so yeah. Had an open mindset towards. That. Yeah, I did, and uh, I shared I shared my thoughts, and um, and uh, I, as I said, I took I, I didn't go there as a um, as a guy without confidence or a guy without uh, knowing how he could um, live another day. Mm-hmm. This was not the case for no. me. I went there to try to kind of um, sort things out, mm-hmm. see if you could uh, make some changes or think in a different way. And yeah. so I looked upon it as a learning process, as, a, as an, intri- an interesting process, rather than something that I feared and yeah. and so on. So um, yeah, it was a, it was a good thing. Mm. And and uh, when this was though a couple of years ago, and and uh, still today, there might be people who have. Or many people have stigma against people seeking professional, professional uh, help sometimes with the challenges happening in life. Uh, why do you why do you think that's still the case? Well, from, in my case, it's fifteen years ago. <laughs> yeah. it, it, the, it's fifteen years ago. Fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. So now, um, uh, the for some reason, this, the the um, mental health is probably the. Or it's a fact. It's the one of the biggest um, health issues in society, mm. and of course, it's the issue with the most dark numbers. Because mm. if you if you if you have a bad knee, yeah. it's easy to tell. Mm. The, my knee is bad. I need to go to see somebody to sort it out, mm-hmm. and it's not stigmatized. Mm-hmm. If you have an, a health issue, it's uh, it um, takes a lot more courage from the individual to, to, to come forward and analyze it and, and to recognize the fact that I need, need help. Mm-hmm. Um, so the stigma is just sad. Yeah. Um, with today's society, the pressure is mounting, mm-hmm. uh, social media, uh, external motivation factors as materialism, um, facade, um, um, cars, uh, purses, um, whatever, mm-hmm. clothes. Uh, everything needs to look perfect. I, mm. I feel sorry for the for the generation of youth who's growing up today because they're put under a hell of a lot more pressure than than than, than I was. And, uh, did they live in different times? And what you're saying is, uh, is of course, uh, absolutely correct. Uh, uh, large health problem, mental health, uh, and and also. Uh, a growing problem. So we see younger people today are are having more mental health problems than than was before. So, and uh, and uh, why do you think we as society and and uh, and in businesses and organizations, why, why why do you think there hasn't been a, a, a larger change when it comes to doing something about mental health problems? So, what is holding us back? Do you think? I, I, re- I wish I knew. I think um, I think the availability of professional help mm-hmm. is um, very hard to it's very hard to get to, to get the service, get hold of the service yeah. through um, through uh, the today's system. Mm-hmm. I think uh, life keys will be a, a big change to that, mm-hmm. uh, and of course cover the needs in a in a completely different way than mm-hmm. it has before. So, so availability, so a central central feature, to, and do you think we're we're ready as a, as, a, as a culture as well to to use the availability to seek help when we when we need? Do you think we're changing? I think we're changing. I think uh, it's been a big change in, for example, places like America, where mm. it's it's even fashionable mm. to go and see somebody. Something you, you should be proud of. But it's, it's <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because mm. it's yeah. recognized that mm. well, I'm. It's kind of I'm put under so much pressure, so I need to go and see a psychiatrist or mm. something like that. So it's a it's more common yeah. thing, yeah. and um, you just need to get rid of the stigma. Mm. And um, my story can help mm. to get rid of it because it's no stigma. Yeah. I, I have no problems talking about it. 
uh, I can put my finger to why I needed it, mm. and uh, I I, um, I also solved the problem. Mm. Um, Thank you. And uh, I, th- I think. Um, and you talk about as well your story in a way that that like I would I would assume that if given the option, if you could have chosen to go through this or not. You would still want to have gone through this because you you get you got learnings. Uh, am I am I putting an answer or, or no, words wouldn't. in your mouth? But I, I wouldn't have been without it. No. I, I wouldn't. Have, I, I wouldn't have been without the problems that I had. No. Be, uh, never mind solving them. But I wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't have been without the problems either because it, it's it's it was my way of analyzing how I could mm. continue to develop. There were things. There were things understandably enough mm-hmm. that was uncomfortable with being in a situation like I was. Mm-hmm. Some people will adore being in that situation mm-hmm. um, and some people do as well. Mm-hmm. But there are things in um, in that kind of um, um, situation I was that, which people don't really realize. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easy to think that it's a it's a hunky dory um, life, a fantastic experience, fantastic and life, and and just all levels, yeah. It's just uh, playing two mm-hmm. matches a week in front of forty, fifty thousand. That must be must be heaven. But yeah. it's it's costly. It uh, it takes a lot of um, mental mm-hmm. preparations and and mental strength to to uh, if you. Um, I used a metaphor sometimes if you. Uh, start a, a match at Anfield and you do a mistake after one minute. You you have to put it right the next involvement next time <laughs> you get the ball unless you're you're finished. You yeah. they, they'll break you. Exactly. So so yeah. it is a, it is certainly an interesting mental challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So you wouldn't wouldn't been w- without it. Uh, and do you do you think we, we uh, do you think that that uh, we also in in society, uh, especially with younger adults and adults now, uh, also should have a focus on resilience, uh, not always walking away from problems, but also helping people getting tools to deal with them. Do you think that's one of the solution? Yeah, for sure. And, and first of all, you need to put an order. You you need to kind of uh, create. Um, um, an understanding that it's quite normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't, life can be tough. That yeah, is, uh, it's that quite is it's normal quite normal, thing, yeah. and it's uh, it's um, in most cases it's not difficult. It's not uh, dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, it's not uh, vital mm-hmm. in most cases. Uh, in most cases, you can learn from them. Mm-hmm. Um, in most cases, it's 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 uh, it could be a way of developing. Mm-hmm. So, so, for example, as we know, with uh, with just depression, uh, one in one in ten every year uh, has depression. So, if you have a company of hundred people, ten of them uh, mm-hmm. one year will have depression. Do you think that that mindset of when people, for example, go through depression, do you think that might might help that people when they're in depression that they they uh, they think about it as a as at least a learning experience or a challenge which has been brought uh, to them that they can they, they can come strong out of it yeah for sure but I um, I wouldn't be able to put a name on whatever I was going through no. whether it was classified as a depression or whether it's called some something else no. for me that's not really interesting what it's called mm-hmm. um, for me it was certainly an interesting learning process although it was tough it was hard mm-hmm. I was I was, um, yeah, I was quite worn and dark and quiet and not very social and um, not very emotional. Mm-hmm. But I remember it, and I, 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 I'm in a better shape now to deal with mm-hmm. swings in life or emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. In a, in, a, in a completely different manner. different manner. But I can't talk on behalf of, because I know that people suffer from severe depression mm. and, and they have a, a lot darker thoughts than I had, mm. for sure. So I, 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 I can't really say something about that. But for, for me, um, it's important to know the difference between internal motivation and external motivation. Who, who do you want to impress? Mm-hmm. Who, who, who do you want to um, be recognized by? 
You think that's then, important also when people meet challenges? Is like like uh, like people who gone through mental challenges or maybe uh, advice to yeah you should see someone or try to get better. Do you think then uh, as well it's important to have an internal motivation for getting better there than external that you should do it yeah, for yourself I and think, not others? I think it helps a lot because I, I speak to a lot of my friends now about mm-hmm. different things and uh, if um, I, I, I find myself very often asking them what, where is your motivation? Is it external? Is there something out there that you want to impress or is it internal? Do you measure yourself? up towards yourself and your own standards and your own ambitions and your own targets and what you decided to achieve or do you measure your performance or your life towards everyone else that's a hard thing to 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 do because you can never be satisfied with that, uh, with uh, with uh, with anything do you think that people with uh, with uh, a lot of external motivations uh, when they experience uh, uh, mental health challenges themselves Do you think they have? Do you have? They have a, a lesser chance of getting better quicker than, than people with internal motivation. If I, mean, I if I'm allowed to think mm. without being uh, educated as a psychiatrist or uh, anything like that, for sure I would think so. Mm. Because the external motivation is very vulnerable. It's not very resistant towards uh, knocks and bruises and uh, and, and um, the opposition and uh, so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not very solid. It can easily dip because uh, you will have too many disappointments. You 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 will feel that you're you're not achieving um, 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 to the to the maximum uh, ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you are um, Uh, following your own ambitions and your own target on, on what you want to achieve in life and uh, what you are expecting from yourself you will even take a knock and a bruise as a motivation mm-hmm. I did that if we if I did uh, some mistakes or if I went through a bad period I looked upon it as a motivation mm. I looked upon it as how can I get through this how can I do it better next time mm-hmm. what do I need to change and how do I need to practice and so on. So I looked basically every time, because you do you do get knocks and bruises and you do you do lose matches, mm. you do lose fights. Mm. Um, um, how, can, how can you bounce back mm. and even be on a better level? Mm. And all that, uh, I think is a more solid and a more um, sustainable process mm. if it comes from an internal motivation. Yeah. This is what I want to achieve for me and for my family maybe. Instead of trying to to please everyone else, oh. it's a very good point, and and uh, we on the clinical psychology side couldn't agree more. <laughs> and uh, when people, for example, are working with themselves, let's say if they have uh, anxiety or or starting to have darker thoughts, that uh, the best thing to do is, of course, to work with internal motivation. Yeah. That they should start with finding reasons to do it for themselves. Yeah. It's of course a great that. Uh, that you can do it for for Uncle Bob or or your yeah. or your colleagues but it should be focused on you yeah. and sometimes helping people to realize it's the same as in the plane uh, and when when uh, you should put the mask on yourself first mm. before you start helping <laughs> so it's a, it's a, so we couldn't agree more with that uh, with that explanation so going back to a little bit uh, uh, Premier League uh, and athletes uh, Uh, and as we know, we looked at a little bit the numbers together, and, and we have this common interest about mental health and, and society and, and and business and and, and sports. Um, we see their footballers, uh, sports athletes, they have uh, more mental health problems than uh, than uh, than the normal population. So, for example, in Premier League, there's a very high number of people mm. struggling. So and that is probably very strange for people to hear that that people earning millions they 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 still are struggling uh, very much and much more than than the normal population. Um, why do you think that is? I think it, it's not it's not that difficult to explain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's the pressure, mm-hmm. expectations, and the dimensions of it mm-hmm. through media, through fans, through supporters, through. Um, TV exposure through basically 
every day mm -hmm. uh, being confronted by uh, with with pressure mm -hmm. that's the one thing and the other thing is the ability to deal with it because it's young these are young people um, w yes with a lot of money but you can't really buy happiness mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a phrase and it's a maybe something that it's hard to believe but you can't really buy happiness mm -hmm. So the fact that one third or even a quarter through the, uh, the I think the latest numbers was a, qu a quarter of the Premier League players mm -hmm. um, has been going through depressions mm -hmm. in 2020 yeah. due to Corona and COVID mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and so on. And there has been, there, there has been surveys in the past mm -hmm. where as much as one third of, of the players in the Premier League says that they, they are in or have been in mm. uh, a kind of depression linked to, for example, gambling or mm. financial problems or uh, pressure itself. So, mm. so, so, um, but th th mm. these are, these, these are, these are actual numbers. Actual these are, numbers, this yeah. is fact. Exactly. So, yeah. so, uh, so it's often as you talked about with mental health because you can't see it like the knee, it's, it's treated differently. So, so, do you think for for uh, for normal people or general population, uh, for people uh, who are not playing in Premier League but they are going through tough periods in life or for going through mental health challenges, do you think it might be positive for them or or uh, the attitude towards mental health is realizing that wow these these uh, sports athletes which I'm watching mm. on TV every week they they suffer the same as, as I and they can do it as well do you think that's positive in helping breaking barriers stigma and, and taboo to yeah in a way but I think most of all it's difficult for people to understand because people tend to link again mm -hmm. uh, fame um, popularity mm -hmm. uh, um, wealth mm -hmm. to happiness yeah. and it's wrong yeah. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Uh, so first of all, we need to break that uh, mm -hmm. kind of misunderstanding. So, so it, 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 basically, mm -hmm. I, I think, I suspect that it's hard for people to believe that famous people with a lot of money can be depressed. Mm -hmm. yeah. They won't write, they won't mm -hmm. recognize it. It's not gonna. It's not happening. But it happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, but it, 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 you can't, you can't really put it into. It's, classes in society where it belongs more than in other places it's 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 individual it's yeah. personal yeah. and it's uh and this link it so as well do you think it then for for many people like it, it should even though it's cliche with the money and the yeah. happiness but we know though it's it's true uh, at least to a large degree do you think though it, it helps people realizing that okay this thing i'm chasing external motivation it's not necessarily going to get me what I want, and that is higher life quality and happiness. Do you think that could be a reminder for someone? Yeah, that, that they think sure. that, that this player playing for, for United or Liverpool now, okay, he is going through tough changes. I'm chasing something in my life now, which is maybe a, a, a wrong focus. Do, do you think that might be useful for, for some people to reflect upon? Yeah, it makes it more normal and it mm -hmm. makes it more understandable that um, that it's um, it's um, comp uh, it ca it can hit uh, randomly. Yeah. It can hit randomly, and and it of course it's it's it could be linked mm -hmm. to incidents or or uh, a growing up or mm -hmm. uh, it's cultural yeah. or uh, whatever it is. It's many many reasons. Mm -hmm. It's many many reasons. But the most vulnerable uh, thing I think mm -hmm. is the uh, is too much of an external motivation where you feel like you have to please everybody else mm -hmm. with the way you approach yourself or the way you look yeah. or, 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 or uh, how, how much success you have mm -hmm. and so on and so on that that is that is so hard mm -hmm. to um, to live by mm -hmm. and to, to to carry on your shoulders every day yeah, and it begins now uh, at an earlier age now with with uh, yeah. social media and yeah. others where, where you, we see that that uh, of course it's an, an important for yeah. maybe the younger people to at least yeah. uh, uh, 
uh, let people <laughs> know that, that they seem to be happy yeah. or successful, that that is a For trend. Sure. And, and that is, we would have done the same if we were teenagers because having the yeah. acceptance from the group is important. Yeah. So, so, but it is, uh, it is a risky thing. Um, uh, if you could look back and, 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 uh, and could give advice to young Stigging, when you, if you could look back, you were going to start a career in Liverpool with the knowledge experience you have today, what, what type of advice would you, would you give yourself? Go in a different direction. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, you I. You tell yourself. Yeah, to, no, don't, don't uh, that. yeah. To be honest, uh, I wanted I wanted to look back on my career thinking I couldn't much I couldn't have done too much different. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to make the most out of it. <laughs> and to be fair, I think I've done it. I think I've done that. Of course, there are changes you could have done on the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I, I I actually concluded with the fact that. I, I I gave it a good shot. Mm-hmm. I gave it a good shot. That's good. And would you would you maybe advise yourself the young thing? Uh, try to have try to have a little bit more fun on it on the ride. <laughs> Don't take it too seriously. Don't beat yourself up. Would would, would, yeah, would, would I, you I, told yourself I, that? Or? I've had a lot of fun. I yeah. had a lot of fun. Um, I would have advised the young Stig to be a little bit more prepared. For the for the for the all the sudden changes for the, change, yeah. for the sudden changes, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, maybe. But that's yeah. all. Okay, great. Well, Stig, it's been a great pleasure to have you, uh, and uh, wonderful to be able to talk about what we are both very interested in, mental health, and mm-hmm. and uh, thank you very much. Likewise. Mm-hmm.